My name's Claire Allen and I'm about three quarters of the way around my 5,000 mile walk around the coast of Great Britain. I knew I wanted it to be a challenge for me. I really liked the idea of it because it was a neat and tidy loop starting and finishing in the same place. I set off on the 8th of August 2023 and I'm hoping to get back to John O'Groats where I started by kind of the middle of August this year. A typical day would be me starting walking by about 8.30 in the morning. I'll walk all day long, usually till about six o'clock in the evening. On average, I would usually walk between 15 and 20 miles. I'm doing this walk to fundraise for two homelessness charities. They are Shelter and Only a Pavement Away. For me, home is everything. And what I've come to realise is that the hardest thing really has been finding somewhere to stay every night. For me, that's been a choice, but for tens of thousands of people across the country, they don't have a choice. I started off hoping to raise £5,000, then I increased my target because everyone had been so generous, and now I'm looking to raise £25,000 across the two different charities. The hardest things about it have been being on my own for long periods of time. And the other thing has obviously been the weather. We saw the wettest February on record and really I felt every droplet of that rain walk through every one of our storms. I've never done anything for this many days in a row. I have noticed that it's taken a toll on my body, but I also knew that every single day that I was walking, I would get stronger and fitter along the way. The walking is almost now secondary to the people that I've met who have offered me a bed, who have bought me a coffee, who've made a donation, simply just stop for a chat. And that really is the thing that has kept me going. I hope that the money that I've raised by doing this walk will just change even one person's life and that will be reason enough to have done it. My name's Sit Powers and I'm living in Preston. I've been in the military for 34 years so fitness has been a massive part of my life. The Enduro 214 was walking the entire 214 Wainwrights continuous and it ended up being 710 kilometres and over 48,000 metres of ascent. I think I'm only the seventh person alive to have done it. So I'm a type 1 diabetic, I have been for nearly 30 years. I also suffered with cancer, so I've had my bum and my bowels removed, so I now have a permanent stoma. I stayed in the mountains for the entirety. It was supposed to be 25 days, but it ended up being 26. And I was carrying a full expedition Bergen, so the Bergen was about 25 kilograms. Sometimes I'd be traveling for eight hours, sometimes I'd be traveling for 14 hours. Sometimes it would be 26 Ks, sometimes it would be 44 Ks. It was very difficult. As soon as I got to the checkpoint, I would set up my tent and then getting food down me, sorting my blood sugars out, try and sleep, and then five o'clock in the morning, off you go again. Mentally, it was harder than physically, if I was honest. Doubting myself that, you know, have I taken on too much? I've got my own demons. A year before this, I'd attempt to take my own life. Some of the people that I met were amazing and I had many friends that would come out and see me as well and do a bit of it. Combat Stress are the leading charity to support veterans from all services that are suffering with mental health issues. There are people putting money into Combat Stress now. I think it's about 16,000. I'm just a conduit. What's most important is, is Combat Stress and the message and raising their profile. That's the most important thing because they do such amazing work. It's not about what you can't do, it's all about what you can do. If you put your mind into something, you'll be amazed at what you can achieve. My name is Johnny Davies, I'm from London. Got the whole COVID process, when we couldn't go to gyms, uh, couldn't train with the people, I got into running as a way to get through lockdown and you know, found a real passion for it when we could start running with other people again. I had the idea to run the London Underground during COVID. To run the line was running the entire London Underground network. 11 lines, 272 stations, over 11 days, 572 kilometers in total. 
the Northern Line 70K, the Circle Line 31K, the District Line 72K, the Victoria Line 23K, Piccadilly Line 84K, Hammersmith and City Line 30K, Metropolitan Line 80K, Bakerloo Line 26K, the Jubilee Line 57K, the Warsaw and City 3K, and finally the Central Line, the last line and the longest line, 92 kilometers. The biggest issue was lack of sleep. Some of these days were taking you know, 14 to 16 hours to complete. The most challenging line was probably day five, the Piccadilly line. I had cramp issues, stomach issues, basically every issue imaginable kind of came to a point of that day. The support we had during the challenge was incredible. And the beauty of doing a challenge that follows a transport route is people can just jump on the tube, come to wherever I am. And I was really blown away by just having people the challenge connected with. So I was fundraising for Calm, the campaign against Living Miserably, who are leading the fight against suicide in the UK. I found through running, a lot of people have discovered a way to deal with loneliness, deal with missing that element of community. And I think Calm, a fantastic organisation who helps people who are struggling with their mental health, who are living in crisis. With Gift Aid, we raised over £30,000 for Calm. I really enjoyed the last challenge and I enjoyed how it connected with people in such a deeper level and I want to take it out of London. So for the next challenge, I will be raising money for Calm again. I'm going to be running to all the capitals of the United Kingdom and Ireland, starting in Edinburgh, running across the Belfast, down to Dublin, over to Cardiff and finishing in London 940 kilometres later over 10 days.